Well, that's the whole basis of chronic fatigue, is a disease that seems invisible that many people put off to depression or laziness, which actually is um, a neurological dysfunction in your body. And COVID long haulers is the same thing. It was almost a natural progression that the study came to be because the symptoms are so similar. So that was one of the things that Dr. Klimas, who's the director of the Institute, took notice of, and that is the impetus for this whole study. And so today I have a very special guest. I have the executive director of the Institute here today, Natalie Sloan. Thanks, Haley. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We have had so much excitement about everything that we have going on over at the Institute. And I thought no better person to bring to the table today and talk about what is the Institute for Neuroimmune Medicine? So the Institute for Neuroimmune Medicine is part of the Karen C. Patel College of Osteopathic Medicine at Nova Southeastern University. Nova Southeastern University is the only university in the country to have an osteopathic and allopathic, which is a traditional MD. Um, and the Institute for Neuroimmune Medicine is special because it is within the university, but really has an independent clinic and research, uh, unlike the rest of the university, the rest of the research that's going on at the university. The clinic, the institute was started about 10 years ago by Dr. Nancy Klimas and Dr. Marianne Fletcher, who unfortunately recently passed. They were on the forefront of the AIDS epidemic and many other um, breakthrough research studies and uh, were one of the only women that were involved in the AIDS research. And Dr. Fletcher, as a matter of fact, was implemented the Title IX um, legislation that allowed women to be active in sports and really has had an instrumental role of bringing women to the forefront um, in science, which is still to this day a place where women are not really in the majority. So the Institute has several different arms. Part of the Institute does translational research, which means that the computational biologists that are part of that team take an idea from basically the computer to a model that is a 3D model to animal models to human models, which means that if we have a disease which from when we're looking for a cure or a treatment, the Institute can start the research from the very beginning and implement it to actual real life in the span of a few years, all within the walls of the Institute. And so part of that is because we also have a clinic, correct? correct. So we have we have research, we have translational research, mm -hmm. which is unique, was a new thing for me to kind of learn and explore. We have computational biology, which is modeling of what has happened in all of the catalog of research from today backwards, mm -hmm. right? And then projecting or looking at ideas of what can be at the forefront of medicine. Correct. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. So in the in the institute, what do we see? Let's go to clinical first. What do we see um, patients? I know that we have patients that travel from all over the world to come see us. What are those patients struggling with? What are we seeing in the institute? The patients are struggling with lifelong chronic fatigue. Um, chronic illness, excuse me, and for the most part have either been misdiagnosed or have not been able to be diagnosed by traditional doctors. They're kind of at the end of their rope. Many of them have uh, chronic fatigue. Some of them have um, inflammation or other neurological uh, diseases such as lupus or sometimes ALS or Parkinson's or the beginnings of other neurodegenerative diseases. The clinicians in the clinic are experts in functional medicine, integrative medicine, toxic exposures, and are able to, within um, a three or four hour first appointment, pinpoint for the most part what that person might have, order the correct labs, and start them on a journey to hopefully feeling a little bit better. That's great. And we, we also have a, a very unique lab setting at the Institute. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So the lab is a CLIA lab, which is a um, designation that's given to a lab for the NI, from the NIH that allows us to do a huge variety of testing. The clinic, uh, which is a research clinic, feeds the lab. So if you come to our clinic, 
and there's blood taken, then our lab will take those, take the lab, take the blood results and do 16 to 20 different tests, probably 10 more than you're getting in a traditional doctor if you were to send it to a regular lab somewhere, anywhere where you live. Absolutely, yeah. When And there's a lot that I've seen that's very unique in the neuroinflammatory and inflammation and also the immune system and immune markers. Mm -hmm. And and in the clinic setting, um, do are some of the patients eligible for some of the clinical trials that we have? Definitely. So the clinic feeds our research for the most part. We have a clinical research team that works on very many uh, different kinds of chronic illnesses, everything from Gulf War illness to long COVID. We do have a recruitment team that goes outside of the Institute, but we do have patients that will come into the clinic that are asked or would like to be parts of those studies. And in that case, we will connect them with the researchers right there in the building. That's great. One of the things that I've noticed or is very exciting, like you had mentioned before, you talked about we have it, physicians that are functional medicine, integrative medicine, uh, neurology, um, hematology, environmental medicine specialists. Mm -hmm. There are, even in our research, there's a very large integrative approach. I was just looking at our catalog of research the other day, and we have uh, COVID long hauler uh, trials. We also have trials using in acetylcysteine, so supplementation, herbals like bacopa. Um, so even in our research, we have a, I always say just this massive 360 approach to figuring out what can make an impact in a person's wellness. Right. Yeah. And that's partially because we have the translational team in the building and they can inform the researchers as to in what direction they can go. Um, and we also have genetics uh, where they can tap into DNA or so it makes it a much more thorough sort of an investigation. It's, it's, it's impressive. Mm -hmm. um, so our institute is part of are the College of Osteopathic Medicine. Right. How are we supported? Do we have grateful patient donors? Do we have, do we do government contracts? How is our university supported? The university is supported by all of those things, intuition, of course. The institute is also supported by government grants, by the college, by the university, and by donors. So everything we do is really donor-based, whether it's a grant from the NIH or the Department of Defense or a private donor, they might have an interest in supporting research. Everything, unfortunately, revolves around money. The more money we have, the more ability we have to perform these different kinds of studies and the better results we get. We also rely on people that want to be parts of these studies. The grateful patients are a huge part. Not only do they become part of the studies in some cases, but they really are our largest donors. Um, we have found that people, I think it's fundraising 101, will give to whatever is closest to their heart. And in some cases, we will have people that come in and see one of our clinicians and have felt truly, truly ill for 10 years. And all of a sudden, there's some glimmer of hope for them, whether it's through research or whether the clinic or the clinicians, and that in turn turns into somebody that wants to be loyal to the Institute for Life. So we are truly grateful for those people. And I think that they're incredibly grateful to the Institute. Mm -hmm. I was speaking with one of our um, physicians and researchers, Dr. Theo Herides, the other day, and he was saying, by the time people get to us, it's 10 years and 10 physicians right. and 10 specialists he was sharing with me. And that was, that was kind of shocking. I believe it. And it's, and it's, we see it all the time in the clinic. So at the Institute, we are working on a variety of different neuroinflammatory disorders. Are we seeing that there has been a shift or a demand and shift with COVID and individuals that are not fully resolving exposure? Yes. So there are probably millions of people in the world or the country right now that are suffering from something that they're not sure that they have, whether it's fatigue, whether it's just a general feeling of unwell. Um, so they can't get over a cold. They can't get rid of a cough. And a lot of those people are dealing with long COVID uh, because when they did get COVID, it probably damaged their heart or some other major organ in their body. We do have a long COVID study going on right now. But I think what 
separates this clinic from others is the length of time that the clinicians spend with each person, in some cases upwards of three hours. Um, it's a very intense kind of a survey that you take before that the clinicians get before they're seen. And the reason that people can be diagnosed with something with long, like long COVID is that the clinicians are taking such an extraordinary amount of time and care with each person that comes to the clinic. And I think also because we have in-house this unique lab mm -hmm. that facilitates, you know, Dr. Klimas and the team have been looking at neuroinflammatory disorders in the lab for years now. And so even though this is a new issue or a new problem that we're being faced with, we've already been set up and primed for over a decade yeah. to look at what's happening in the body when the body can't re-regulate or can't come back into a homeostasis. Correct. Yeah. So it's not something that I think we wanted to be prepared for, but I think it's why we've been able to be so nimble and pivot so quickly. Well, that's the whole basis of chronic fatigue is a disease that seems invisible that many people put off to depression or laziness, which actually is um, a neurological dysfunction in your body. And COVID long haulers is the same thing. It was almost a natural progression that the study came to be because the symptoms are so similar. So that was one of the things that Dr. Klimas, who's the director of the Institute, took notice of. And that is the impetus for this whole study. That's great. It's, that's exciting. And also, we are also seeing, um, you had mentioned before about our computational biology department. And a lot of the research there with neuroinflammatory disorders is this whole concept of viral reactivation. And, and, and we were, you know, full swing into looking at viral reactivation with chronic fatigue, with neuroinflammatory response, and then along came COVID. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing a lot of that similarity where there's the Epstein-Barr virus, we're seeing some of the herpes viruses be reactivated or creating, and you brought in the genetics component, looking at turning on genes, the epigenetic aspect of this, and, and again, why a body can't re-regulate. Correct. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's uh, fascinating. So I want everybody to know that, you know, we are here to provide hope and help for individuals that are dealing with inflammation and chronic fatigue. And so if people are looking for ways to engage with us, do we have newsletters? Do we do any educational work? Can they participate in the trials and studies? Where would they go? They would go to our website, um, nova.edu backslash I-N-I-M. Uh, all of the studies are on that website, and you can click a link and become part of the study. There's also a link to the clinic. There's also a fundraising link that shows you what money, what we're raising money for and how you can become involved. Uh, we have social media presence on Facebook and X, formerly known as Twitter. <laughs> um, and we are, in this case, of course, launching a podcast that we hope will be educational. Right. That's wonderful. And, and our newsletter. And I mean, our newsletter. Yeah. And, and so make sure you all reach out to us. Make sure that you're involved. And if you are dealing with any of the things that we just talked about, if you have loved ones or family, can you just tell me one more time how important it is that people support financially as well? Well, we are a nonprofit. The university is a nonprofit. The clinic does not operate with any kind of a profit at all. Um, so it's crucially important for us to have donations, not only to fund research, but to fund those people that can't afford to come. So we do have a grateful patient fund. If someone needs to come in and they are unable to pay, then we have a fund to help them. So not only are you helping research moving that forward, but you're also helping people that may or may not have a chance to, to get this kind of treatment that really could be life-changing. Um, obviously, the university as a nonprofit has millions of, others opp of other opportunities. You can endow chairs. You can find uh, multiple programs within the College of Osteopathic Medicine, which include nutrition, um, family therapy, um, multiple things. All of that, we all work together, so all those things in turn help us. Um, the Institute does work across the university, across all of the health profession divisions. We try to be inclusive of everyone, and our research studies do do the same. So the university has a system for recognizing donors, for including them in societies, for giving them recognition, for 
putting your name on a building if you want to go that far. We love it. Yeah. <laughs> so everything in a nonprofit always revolves around around giving. Wonderful. And I just want to reiterate one more time what has been amazing for me to see is the ability for people to come into the clinic and receive exceptional care. I mean, in-depth, exceptional care that encompasses I, you know, really all aspects of medicine. There hasn't been a stone unturned, in my opinion, yeah, when people are working in our clinic. And then also to be partic to participate in trials. We're really working on cutting edge research. Um, and, you know, it's sometimes so hard to connect to, to those kinds of things. And, and we try to make that accessible and easy. So I just want to thank you so much for coming today. Thank um, you. We have an incredible institute. Thanks in part and largely in part to you. And Jesus. absolutely. And we look forward to all the advancements that we're going to see in dealing with individuals that are really struggling with chronic disease, fatigue, and inflammation. Yep. Thank you. We are definitely here to help.